The Star Trek fan film guidelines are, well, a controversial sticking point to many fans. They're either considered the best compromise CBS and Paramount can offer until a better idea comes along, or they're that sticking point I mentioned earlier that suggests that the powers of be are trying to suppress the fans and their community. Certainly there is an element that claims that CBS and Paramount are scared for the most part of the superior products of creativity laid out by the fan films, and, well, yeah, that's not really a great argument. You see, fan films as a whole are not really a threat to the franchise. And whilst there's a franchise, there will always be a fan film. And uh, that's part of how this works. Whilst at the same time, a fan film can actually sometimes, sometimes, be better than the franchise it's portraying. Enterprise was, for me, pretty much a disappointment from beginning to end. It did have a good mid-season, and then it lost its track with the opening of Season 4, had a great bit of fun within the mirror darkly, and then had the most disappointing send-off of any Star Trek series. And considering the original series didn't get a send-off at all, that's actually saying something. It certainly had a few saving graces, sure, but in the end, Enterprise really ended with a disappointing series and the threat of a looming end to the franchise. But maybe the fans could save the franchise. Maybe, just maybe, one fan film project could save us all. With great special effects, good acting, and above all, a good story. Something that would capture the imagination of the audience and draw them in with applause. Something that wasn't Axana. Star Trek Horizon, compared to Enterprise, is actually a better product in my opinion, and is officially to this date the most popular Star Trek fan film ever made, pushing Axanar off the top spot. And much to Alec Peter's chagrin, who accused the Star Trek Horizon directors of buying views with no actual evidence to back it up. As it stands, Horizon is at 6.5 million views on its YouTube channel, whereas Axanar stands at just half that. Making Horizon, I'm sorry, the most successful Star Trek fan film ever. And with good reason. Star Trek Horizon was completed prior to the guidelines of the Axanar settlement, and was done on a budget of $22,000, nearly double the money asked for from the Kickstarter. Now, you may ask, why was Horizon not sued? It certainly promised better than Enterprise offered in initial teasers. The effects were on a par with Axanar, and the acting was almost just as good. So why is this overlooked? Well, for one, they didn't seek to profit from the franchise. The director didn't pay himself a salary, and it was done well under the $100,000 limitation that would be set by the guidelines. It didn't claim to be a threat to what CBS or Paramount could produce, and neither did it claim to be an independent production to the intellectual Star Trek license. It was a full-fledged fan movie. With flaws, yes, and we will get to those. But it did have a solid base, a solid script, could be considered by fans as canon, and just as easily ignored by the main studios as no threat to the actual canon. It's not actual canon. But it's no threat to the timeline itself, so I'm kind of happy to accept it as a canon story. Until CBS tells me otherwise. 
In many respects, it did everything right that Axnar did wrong. And it's very sad to note that we may never see another feature-length Star Trek fan film again. But at least we can say the last one bought us everything that Axnar promised us and more. Set during the Romulan War after the season end of Enterprise, Horizon presents to us a well-crafted story of unsung heroes on the Starship Discovery, who, as the captain points out as a matter of personal offence, are only a footnote in future history. There's nothing tremendously quadrant-changing about this story, nothing to mess with the lore or canon in a great way, which is what makes this film work. It's not an arrogant piece of work where the heroes must make a profound impact on the history books. It doesn't make their sacrifice any the less important or the characters any the less heroes. In many respects, it makes them more heroic than the Enterprise crew. And yes, I know I keep harping on about how terrible Enterprise is, or was, but at least in this movie, the crew of the Discovery are actually thinking intelligent human beings plus one Romulan defector. I mean, this is how Enterprise goes for me as a whole. T'Pol, the smart one. Woman, obviously. Humans, mainly male, whose sole purpose on this voyage is to go out into the final frontier and find as many ways to mess up the timeline and make sure that the Federation doesn't happen. I'm telling you now, if the Temple Cold War had kept out of this timeline, the bad guys would have won easily without even having to fire a single Temple bullet. However, in Horizon, the crew of the Discovery actually think their way out of a problem. Or at least they thought about what got them into their situation and used that as a basis to solve where they are. Just by looking at the star chart. I mean, who the thunk? Figuring out where you are just by looking at a star chart. Of course, I know they're not officially canon, but I had to ask myself, why wasn't it these guys who founded the Federation instead of Archer's crew? And speaking of Enterprise, well played Horizon. Whilst Enterprise does make an appearance, there's no cameo, no stealing the show or the limelight from the Discovery crew, and the total respect that this is the Discovery story. The Enterprise's presence is purely transitory in this production, as it should be, but it's not underplayed either. It's actually important to the plot. Another example of this great balance here is knowing the difference between what carries a plot and telling a story. Of course, Enterprise is involved in one of the most important missions of the Alliance. It has to be. It is, after all, quite surprisingly, the most experienced crew in this little fleet. And yeah, considering what I said about the crew earlier, that should scare a lot of you right now. So thank God it's not the Enterprise from which we should rely to save the day, huh? <sighs> Can you tell I'm not a huge fan of the Enterprise series yet? Pity me even more, I have four seasons of the thing to review. Praise on the character's competence aside though, as much as they are all well-rounded and developed, for such a one-shot movie, uh, the problem lies in exposition. Uh, there is a lot of telling and not showing, which shows that Tommy Craft, whilst tremendous at character development, needs to learn to tone down a lot of the explanation and exposition in his storytelling. For example, the Romulan defector Tamar explains her history as a Romulan to a potential new friend out of the blue for no apparent reason other than to tell the audience to why she is an outsider amongst her people as well amongst the humanity she is defected to. And yet, if I were the person she was actually talking to in that scene, I would have to be honest and find her to be quite pedantic and rude, whatever the lying intentions might have been. Also, much of the film takes up a lot of time explaining why the crew miss a certain character and why she was so important, rather than actually showing us. It's a minor flaw considering this is Tommy Craft's first feature movie and it's forgivable because it's a great story and so much effort has been justifiably put into it. It means that this minor flaw in early storytelling can easily be overlooked. The effects and visuals, as I said, are just awesome. But in some places they can be a tad over glaring. 
For example, I'm not a keen fan on lens flare, which isn't quite overdone, but there is enough of it to notice the JJ flare influence in the production. The backgrounds are deliberately out of focus, which is understandable considering it's a green screen film, but I feel it's a tad overdone. Not enough to be annoying or to take away from the film itself, but it does take away the claustrophobia of an early NX-01 bridge. The overabundance of technology in such a tight space was a deliberate part of Enterprise. The sheer expense of building the NX-01 would require as small a ship as humanly possible to carry an overabundance of technology and crew to sustain it. But again, the production was so well put together along with the visuals, both interior and exterior, it's actually quite a minor quibble that I'm sure Tommy has noted and will correct in future. The story itself is, well, flawless. It's as long a fan film as you can get to the actual timeline, and I dare say with some offhand references and nods to Star Trek Online as you can make, short of throwing in the original characters of course. Law, canon and costuming are all here, and I'm told provided once again by the seemingly over-talented director and producer Tommy. By creating an easily to throw away set of characters and lore into an already lore-rich universe, the story stands well enough on its own to be considered canon if you want it to be, without actually having to be considered canon by CBS or Paramount. You see, it fits so flawlessly into the Trek universe and can be ignored just as easily without having to do runarounds in your heads as to where it might actually fit into canon. And I've got to admit, I've never seen that before. I can see why this is the most successful Star Trek fan film on YouTube to date. And it shows how much respect can be earned if you actually commit yourself to finishing the project you started and not aim to overreach your goals. At $22,000, Horizon shows you don't need a Hollywood ton of money to do a full-length feature movie, fan film or otherwise, if you have a dedicated talent and time on your hands. And plus, this was acted out by dedicated actors, not just friends and family, but a group of people who saw the vision and had a true reason to believe it was doable. Horizon deserves the praise it gets, and a heck of a lot more. Full praise is rarely something I give on this channel, and as far as Star Trek Horizon goes, it's earned that medal of trust and I look forward to seeing more from Tommy Craft and his team in the future. It's just a shame we will never see a Horizon 2. But Tommy has shown so much more respect for the franchise he loves than his direct competition and it shows. His talent I know should and will go far. Until next time. Ciao.